power meters are great. We are massive proponents of them here at GCN for anyone that is interested in increasing their performance on the bike or maybe just for nailing their pacing strategy at an event. But dare we say it, they are also a fun little toy as well. As soon as you get one, you're going to become obsessed with getting the numbers higher and higher. Now, it might be on your local climb or your functional threshold power and also your sprint. Trying to get your highest ever wattage is actually strangely addictive and a great little game to play with your mates. But how exactly do you go about getting your maximum sprint power? Well, I guess it might seem simple to sprint as hard as you possibly can. But is there a little bit more to it than that? Well, we are about to find out. We're going to do a total of nine sprints each, three in very different situations. Now, first up, we are going to be accelerating in a big gear from a standing start. Huge torque is going to be going through the pedals in much the same way as Teo Boss or Sir Chris Hoy. <laughs> yeah, exactly like Boss and Hoy. One. Well, the first set of sprints are done, so it's time to talk about our results. Now, I certainly felt like I was putting a hell of a lot of power through my You legs. looked like you were putting a hell of a lot of power. I, straight, I think I actually pulled a muscle, not even in my legs, like in my lower stomach. I think I might have given myself a bit of a hernia. Anyway, the first run, I needed 952 watts. Slightly disappointing. Second one, a little bit better, 974. Still didn't break the four-figure barrier. But I did on the last one. I got 1,019 watts. Now, it's hard to say whether this is good at the moment. It's been a long time since I did any kind of sprint in training. But I guess we'll see when we do the next set. Yeah, and I got 943 for my first one. But 1,046 for the second. And we'll just draw a line over number three. That was 743. I'm not sure what happened there. I can't believe that. You've got a higher power than me. You were a terrible sprinter when you rode. That is true. You were quite bad as yeah, well. Yeah, but I wasn't as bad, so my sprint power should be better. Let's do the next one. So, sprint set number two. This is going to be all about high cadence and high speed. Now, to get the speed part, we're going to use a descent. That should get us up to 50 k's per hour whilst leaving us fresh for the sprint. The sprint itself, once again, will be going flat out, this time, though, in a gear that we can get on top of as soon as possible. So, in essence, we're going to be doing very similar efforts to Cav or Kittle at the end of a pro race. Right, what did you get? Well, I'm pretty chuffed actually, mate. I think I got one of my highest powers ever, 1,242 watts. Beat that. Okay, well, I got 1,256 <laughs> watts yeah. on my first run. What? And then I went on to do 1,280, and on the final one, when I really concentrated, I managed to break the 1,300 watt barrier. No, the 1,300 yeah. watt barrier. I got 1,308 watts. I can almost hear Caleb Ewan quaking in his boots. That's really genuinely actually, quite impressive, mate. Yeah, seriously, I don't know if I've ever done over 1,300 watts before, even when I was racing. Maybe it's time to make a comeback. Might be. Well, let's see if I can break it in set three. Ready? 1,300 watts. Yeah, 1,300. I'm so happy. So, our third and final set. This time, once again, like set one, we're going to be starting from a very slow speed. But instead of being in a hard gear, we're going to be in a very easy one, something like 39 by 21. Then once again, go as hard as we possibly can. Now, we might look a bit silly doing this, but that hasn't stopped us making the previous videos on GCN, and it's all in the name of science. I think we're actually going to look very much like Liam Phillips 
or Caroline Buchanan out of the start gate in a BMX race. <laughs> One thousand and sixty-eight! Well, the results of our low speed, high cadence sprinting is in. And I tell you what, Dan, I was consistent, if not very powerful. 1,050 watts, 1,051 watts, and then 1,076 watts. So less than your Cav and Kittle type sprints earlier. So I'm pleased to hear that because I was also lower than before. I had just under 1,200 watts, and I managed 1,208, and finally 1,214 watts at the end. So almost 100 watts lower than my amazing 1,308 watt uh, sprint that I did earlier, which I'm still very, very pleased and proud about. Yeah, well, well, aside then from Dan's natural talent, what's actually the science behind this? Well, when you are sprinting at a low speed and a high cadence, there is almost no resistance. So you are limited by your leg speed. So the more slow twitch muscle fibers you have, the lower your power is gonna be because at that cadence, you are using almost entirely fast twitch. Then for the low speed, low cadence sprints, the force you're having to generate just to get any kind of movement is massive. You are recruiting every muscle fiber you have However, because that speed of movement is so low, your power is therefore also lower. Hmm. So I guess if we take the example of a track sprinter who has an enormous number of fast twitch versus slow twitch muscle fibers, they're able to generate an enormous amount of force at that low speed straight out of the gate. So they do manage to achieve quite a high power. So in terms of you at home trying to get your maximum number on your power meter, it might just come down to the type of physiology that you've got. And in order to train it and make it better than it was before, it might be a good idea to train both concepts. So slow speed, i.e. high torque, but also very high cadence as well. And when you do combine them together, you might well find that you get a new personal best. Yeah, and in the important question of how do you beat your mates, I think the key is to choose the type of sprinting that works for you. So in our case, we are just like Cav and Kittle, I guess. Yeah, but they've also got technique as well as power. So you might want to try and improve that. And we've got just the video for you because up there, we give you our own sprinting tips yeah, but to learn from the master, and I'm not just talking about Dan, Mark Cavendish gave us his top five sprinting tips, and that video is just down there. I have a feeling I know which one they're going to click through to. I think so. Anyway, before you click through to either, make sure you subscribe by clicking on the globe. <laughs>